this is your reminder that no one, and I mean no one, is consistently waking up at 5am every morning, heading out the door and jogging 10k, then bouncing back for a healthy, nutritious, balanced breakfast, just to gallop through the front door, looking immaculate to their high-powered, fulfilling job. And I'm going to be completely honest, I don't even think that there's any beauty in that. January is the worst and I've been finding it really really difficult. The guilt and the pressure to make 2024 the best year yet alongside the hangovers of the year before where I worked myself into the ground to graduate as a doctor and then began working full-time in the NHS. But if there is one lesson that I learned last year it is the importance of getting out of an all or nothing mindset and not only that where there isn't that much beauty in perfection there is so much beauty in plodding on and trying the days where you really 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 don't want to go into work i don't want to go to work but you pull yourself together and you do or when rest and recuperation one day looks like sprawling out horizontally in front of trashy tv and then the next it's waking up without having to use your snooze button and heading to the gym evenings where you are shoveling chocolatey desserts down your gullet because that is what your soul needs and the next day you're craving a nutritious and balanced smoothie so this is my realistic Monday to Friday routine. Not always perfect, but always trying. So my day does normally start at 5am, however this week was filmed off the back of seven days annual leave and as you can probably tell, I I was definitely struggling to get back into my routine. Ooh, good morning, my wonderful camquats. Am I awake? Am I awake? Today is Monday. It's 6 a.m. I've been working two hours. After a considerable amount of internal persuasion, I was finally able to tear myself away from the sofa and start the process of getting myself ready for my Monday morning. I started off with a quick blitz clean of the kitchen. You may be aware of the bag on the floor. That is from my annual leave. Will it be unpacked by the end of the week? Who knows? Very irrelevant, guys, and probably quite boring, but I had a little middle aisle blender since I moved into this flat, and am I shocked? That it broke last week, so we got a new blender. I made myself a nice green smoothie. I and I brought it to my desk to get some work done before my nine to five. I have officially been a doctor for six months, which is crazy. And I'm two months into my second rotation, which is in psychiatry. I am unbelievably lucky for this rotation because I have no on calls. I'm nine to five, Monday's Friday, and I am savoring every minute because my next rotation is meant to be pretty intense and the rotor is really meant to be a lot more taxing before anyone comes at me for wearing scrubs in my kitchen. They are clean scrubs, I promise. I need to pack my bag for work. The one sub ideal part of my psychiatry rotation is that every Monday I spend the day on the acute medical unit. Not sure why, but maybe those in charge are a little bit worried that we might just get a little bit too happy. Right, I'm gonna get myself a coffee. And then I've got, wait, who's mine? That's chicken. Yeah, that's, this one. yeah. Okay, I'll put it in a little part of your bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excuse Ruva on in the background. First day back wasn't too bad. Just tired. But I mean, that's nothing new. I'm just really, really, really resisting the urge to catch up on traitors instead of get work done because I have so much work to get done. Ugh. It is so addictive. 
Without breaching any patient confidentiality, here's a brief rundown of what I got up to on the acute medical unit. I started the morning doing the ward round with the consultant. I saw five patients with them, mostly patients with infective exacerbations of COPD, which did make it easier to acclimatise to one day of acute medicine amongst a sea of psychiatry. Health is wealth. Am I right, girls? Cheers. You've got to have a good after work snack to get you through the day. And today's is a mince pie. It's January. Kindly heated up by my wonderful boyfriend. Heated up a little bit too much that it bit my tongue. But heated up all the same. Cheers. <laughs> Aside from our normal full-time job as doctors in the NHS, first-year doctors in the UK also have a portfolio that they need to complete every year, which does take up a considerable amount of time. There's also quite a lot of online training to get done. On top of that, I do like to try and keep up to date with my medical knowledge because I will be having to sit more exams next year. Oh, and then, of course, I made the decision to also to try and document my life online, which, of course, hardly takes up any of my time as well. In short, as you can probably tell, the work does absolutely not end when I get home. Okay. For you. I'll be quite hot. And that's all soft enough to Yeah. Yeah. I would say that I am very lucky though for two reasons. Number one, I don't have a medic boyfriend, which definitely means that one of us has more time than the other one. And number two, my non-medic boyfriend is definitely a better cook than me. For dinner, we were having pasta with a lentil sauce, which if I have the recipe, I will definitely try and link it down below. Typically, as in when my life is together, I try and avoid eating my food in front of a screen. Obviously to just be a little bit more mindful about what I'm eating, but also so I can have quality time in the evening and not just so now. However, this week was just one of those weeks that called for shoveling food down my gullet, parked in front of trashy reality TV. And you know what? I'm not gonna feel guilty about it. Right now, after I'm still hungry, after eating my pasta, this is gonna fill a void for me. I don't know if I want ice cream. Do I want ice cream? Okay, move out a carton, leave in plastic basin, remove film lid, invert onto a microwavable plate, okay? <coughs> One minute ten. Beep bop boop. If you're new here, then there is a potential chance that you're a highly intellectual individual who is maybe expecting a weekly vlog of a dedicated doctor who spends every moment of her free time with her head in a book. And if you have come for that, then I am deeply sorry because I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I'm pretty sure that Love Island and other reality TV shows got me through medical school. There is something so beautiful from the pure escapism and mind numbing nature of these programs that allows you to completely shut your brain off after a day of it working 100 miles an hour. Now I'm not for a moment discouraging chocolate. However, when I eat sugar past 8 p.m., I don't go to bed. I don't really know how these events work, but I think, I guess, they're meant to like go over the top, then... Hmm. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? My New Year's resolution is actually to take a little bit more pride in my appearance because, like, I'm all for embracing your natural self, but, like, there have been a couple days that I have taken it a little bit too far in work. So today I wore mascara for work. 
I'm genuinely not saying that to try and be like, I'm not like those other girls, I'm not like those other girls, because I'm the most basic bitch there is. I love a full glam, but there's just no in between. I either haven't brushed my hair in a week and my face is the colour of a tomato, or I'm full face, eight inches thick of makeup. And I just think maybe my New Year's resolution is to like balance it out a little bit. Like just a little bit more effort maybe for my day to day. And when I say more effort, I mean mascara and brushing my hair. be happy to hear that the full two minute rendition of Bare Necessities has been cut from the final vlog edit because let's be honest who else is finding that funny other than me however it may or may not be added as a deleted scene at the end of the vlog How are we feeling today? I am feeling mixed emotions. Gonna be honest with you, I do not like this whole go into the acute medical unit for one day and then you're on site the rest of the week because you just can't really get into the swing of things because you're only there for one day. You're kind of a little bit of a loose spanner. That's not the right word. A loose, you, 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 you're a loose onion. And then now I feel like it's kind of sapped out my energy for psych today. Like I'm not really looking forward to going in for psych. So I'm gonna make myself a little smoothie. Now I know what you're thinking. No one in their right mind would eat these bananas. I'm evidently not in my right mind because I'm gonna use them after I'm gonna put them in a smoothie. I actually normally hate bananas in a smoothie, but I think Controversially, I love a bruised banana. I really love a bruised banana because they're so sweet. Oh, we definitely need to use that cauliflower. I'll check it because it stinks. Because it stinks. Oh, I should out there. You don't want to eat something that stinks. Yeah, but I feel like cauliflower just always stinks. You sure? Yeah, I've never thought a cauliflower smells nice. Yeah, it like stinks then. But I mean, it, there's a difference between like mold stink and then just pungent smell. I am notoriously bad for letting my nutrition slip when I'm a busy, 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 tired girl. It is the first thing to go, but I've been really loving having my smoothies in the morning. I think it might be the knowledge that even if my diet goes to shit for the rest of the day, at least I've got in a healthy proportion of my five a day within the first two hours of me being awake. Some leafy greens, some fruit, my AG1, my AG1 vitamin D drops. Even if I've got my energy sapped out of me by the time I go home and have a ramen, I feel like I've done pretty well for the day. Dill, am I being silly? <clears throat> it's the old bottle, but the new... Oh, you could have thing. told me that. Can you grab me a spoon? Cheers. 
Tuesday on my psychiatric ward is the female ward round. So female patients come into the doctor's office, we talk through how they're feeling, maybe their current medications, discharge planning, and make any other plans for their care for that week after getting a little bit of life admin work done with my smoothie. It was time to make myself look a little bit more put together with the humble wax stick. Shockingly, I have parted ways with the Ego Argan Oil Gel, based on the knowledge that supposedly a wax stick is better on your hair. Of course, I will keep you updated with how I get on. However, at the moment, I do not think I have yet nailed the technique. Do you want something to eat quickly? No, no. Sure, something you can take in the car? A bit of toast? No, no. Okay. A big love and hate from my psychiatry rotation is not wearing scrubs. On one hand, I enjoy wearing my own clothes and looking a little bit more put together some days, but on the other hand, God, I love the convenience of just whacking on a pair of scrubs and not having to think about what you're wearing. Oh, cheers. Whoa. Psychiatry overall has been very chill. I think that emotionally it can be very draining. I think sometimes I sit through the ward rounds and like it really, really, really breaks my heart. That I think hearing the events that have led up to people's admissions into a psychiatric unit tends to be quite emotional. And as we know, I have a little bit of an issue with compartmentalizing my emotions and the emotions of patients it's definitely something that I need to work on not taking on everyone's emotions as if they were my own. It's very paperwork heavy. I, we basically sit in the office all day and just do documentation, letters, referrals. Go on, I'm letting you go. I mean, once again, I am rambling. Psychiatry is, you know, it's, it's a change of pace, definitely. And then a couple of weeks ago, a patient did try attack myself and another doctor. That was my first experience of psychiatry definitely not being chill. There are a lot of people who are really, really, really unwell and it's a very different type of unwell to get used to. Yeah, that was a big shock to me because I felt as though I had built quite a good rapport with that patient and it just happened so, 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 so quick. Basically, the other doctor went and got help way before I had, like I genuinely did not clock it was going that way right up until the last minute. And the other doctor clocked it before me. And then when we were talking about it afterwards, the other doctor who, who, is, who is more experienced than me, and she basically went through all the signs that she could spot like way before I had any inkling it was heading that way. Anyway, I'm nearly at work. I have rambled again. Hi guys, we've finished for the day. I'm back in my car. Have I zoomed out all the way? I'm in the work car park, so my bag always does this. Let me out. So this evening, I completely forgot. I have my annual meeting with my management. I knew it was at some point this week, and this week is, is just kind of a little bit unorganized. Like I am just kind of taking every hour as it comes. Just such a nice surprise. We just don't get to see them that much anymore, and I'm so excited! I'm really excited to see them. Hey! Now, obviously, if I had checked my calendar this morning, I probably would have maybe put more of an effort in face-wise because I'm gonna get the train straight there now. So I'm gonna look a little bit dishevelled and hey ho, it is what it is. Oh, guess who's a very, very, very silly girl? Is it you? Yeah, yeah, it's me. The dinner's tomorrow. Being a doctor with ADHD, I obviously take medication, but alongside that, I am acutely aware of my tendency to miss important details and where I think I'm so aware of this in work and <laughs> definitely try and overcompensate. I think my brain is so mentally exhausted from doing that all day that it makes my tendency to miss key details even worse outside of work. So you'll be happy to know I actually didn't realise that the dinner was the next day until I was outside 
a restaurant. This did, however, mean that I got a little bit of extra time to edit whilst my wonderful boyfriend got dinner together. This is one of our staple recipes from M, the nutritionist that I'll definitely link below. It is a recipe that works just as well on a work night as it does if you're making dinner for friends. So nutritious and comforting and delicious all at the same time. And as with most our dinners, because I'm vegetarian and Dylan is not, he just lumps a load of chicken on, but I'm sure he probably would want me to apologize to any Italians watching. I've absolutely loved about my smoothie being part of my daily routine is clearly not trying to get the lid off the blender bottle but the opportunity to cram so much variety into your daily diet while simultaneously using up any fresh produce that you've got left in the fridge that could be going off. Every smoothie is a little bit of an improvisation but I tend to stick to some leafy greens. <laughs> frozen fruit, my AG1 powder, my vitamin D drops, and maybe some lemon zest or mint just for a little bit of extra flavor. If you're thinking, Faye, are you dressed slightly differently this morning? You would be completely correct. Another thing that immediately exits my weekly routine as soon as I become mildly stressed or burnt out is exercise. And obviously I know you probably know that exercise is one of the best coping strategies for stress there is. Do I consciously recognize that and make it an intentional non-negotiable part of my weekly routine when I am feeling like pulling my hair out. No. It's cold inside the flat. No, it's not. Yes, it is. We are going to the gym. I have decided that going to the gym once a week is a lot better than not going for six weeks and feeling guilty and then going for five days a week for a month and then not going again. A lot more sustainable. Will, will I really be seeing any major booty growth? Probably not. Will I be exercising for my mind, my body and my soul and be able to keep it up? Potentially. Every time Dylan drives, he just has to move the, the chair back about five meters because we were faffing a little bit more getting out the door in the morning we didn't have as much time in the gym that we wanted so we just did some deadlifts and leg press and then we did have to go home because i have a full-time job to go to however it is the going that counts and i am taking it as a win anyway oh. mission success mission success <laughs> Oh god, oh very good. Way. Then it was time to make myself look mildly presentable for work, shovel some breakfast down my gullet, make myself a coffee and get myself out the door. Thank you. Where is it? Cheers. Great. Oh. I've got to bring the chair forward, of course. Woo! And we're off. So today is the day that I'm the only junior doctor on the ward so what is it i typically do on a wednesday all new patients need bloods and ecg so i'll get them done a lot of the patients also have weekly bloods for some of the medications that they take got to take someone's prolactin i think i have two discharge summaries to do question mark also i've got to call a patient's family because Obviously, if people come in and they're quite unwell, a lot of the time it can be quite difficult to take a history from them. And also, I think obviously it's important to have good lines of communication with families anyway. That should be my day. After work, I headed into central London for the second time that week for my meeting with my management and we discussed where my content might be heading this year. And I explained to them that I still have absolutely no idea. So I have been a little bit concerned because as you may have seen in previous vlogs, I am very rarely seen without my sippy cup. Now, I would say three of these sippy cups bear an emblem of a brand that I am not using. So I'm thinking, I sit down, I put traitors on, I have a fair few Sharpies 
And like, I'm not the most artistic person in the world. I'm not even sure if this is gonna work, but I think it could be quite therapeutic. I think maybe something positive may be created. Who knows? It, or it may be a pile of trash, but then at least I can still drink water out of it and not have that branding plastered all over my social media. If anyone has any nice designs they've seen of people covering over their sippy cups, then please send them my way because I don't think that mine was too much of a success. I would also encourage you guys to remember that one of the most powerful votes that we have is how we choose to spend our money every day. Of course, I would encourage anyone to use their democratic right to vote, but remember that you can vote every single day, several times a day. This is something that I haven't always been perfect with and it is definitely a work in progress. But yeah, I just wanted to give you all a little bit of a reminder that together we have more power than we realise. I mean, like a work in progress. I think maybe if I kept on doodling around it, then it would look way cooler or like put something in the centre. But like in terms of working with what I've got, I think I did an all right job. Thursdays on psychiatry are for the men's ward round. Similar to the female's ward round, there are half an hour slots throughout the day up until around 3 p.m. where patients attend the doctor's office and we talk about how they're feeling, maybe their care coordinator or sometimes also their family. It's quite unusual to have a mixed psychiatric inpatient ward and there are definitely some cons to that. However, personally for my learning, it's been really, really, really useful to see such a wide range of psychiatric presentations in men and women reviewed a video that I've got coming out soon about people pleasing and I'm really 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 struggling for a title so if anyone's got any ideas for a title please leave them in the comments. Hey. I need to get out the door. Not sure what space Dylan is staring off into whilst I'm frantically trying to get out the door. And we are ready for another day of inpatient psychiatry. Woo! Is it on? Yeah. Before I go, I do just need to say that basically last night when I came in, I filmed myself coming in. I left the keys, including my car keys, in the door overnight. And we only noticed this morning. Happy Thursday, everyone. Cheers. Cheers. Guys, I just came back from work to the nicest surprise. Wait, I think the lens might be a little bit blurry. Better? Not better. So today is the 25th of January, which is basically St. Dwin Wednesday in Wales. So it's the Welsh equivalent of Valentine's Day, I guess. But I really was not expecting to come out to anything in particular, especially because Dylan is not Welsh. We won't hold that against him. And I am in work tomorrow, so I'll just have a single glass of wine. My day on psychiatry was relatively chill. However, as I mentioned a little bit earlier on, even when it's relatively chill in terms of the documentation or the admin required, it's never really emotionally chill on the ward round days. That being said, I think one of the most rewarding things about being on psychiatry is actually the huge difference you see between patients when they come in maybe psychotic and then staying a lot longer in hospital than the average stay in hospital dealing with a physical health condition and seeing them slowly come back to reality is one of my favourite parts of inpatient psychiatry that I really wasn't expecting, but of course for some people it's harder for them to get better or, or there's the knowledge that they might get better in hospital but then a year down the line they'll probably come back to an inpatient unit again and the emotional processing of all of that does take its toll so coming home to dinner on the table cooked and ready is so nice for my weary brain but of course coming home to such a nice surprise that we were celebrating the Nod Santa Swin Wen, which I wasn't expecting at all.
because I'm an eldest daughter overachiever. Of course, every aspect of my life needs to be hyper-organized. So for Christmas, myself and Dylan do categories for presents. Yes, I know that I am a control freak, but we've done it for two years and I do actually really enjoy it because there's still scope for creativity. Our categories are something to do, something to eat, something to drink, something to wear and something homemade. For something to do, Dylan got me this paint by numbers, which is a picture of us on holiday in Ibiza from July. So on evenings that we're both free and maybe we don't want to leave the flat or maybe I've had a pretty stressful day in work. We have been gradually trying to work through this painting. I'll leave the link for the website in the description box. I have a feeling it will take us quite a while, but it's so therapeutic. So I really don't mind. Between the painting and the low lighting, I was feeling sufficiently wound down after an emotionally taxing day and I was ready for my skincare and bed. Please excuse my unironed pyjamas guys, I think we've established that this week my life wasn't as put together as I would have liked. On the days that I'm feeling a little bit lower in energy, I am very lucky because I can just skip the smoothie and just have my scoop of AG1 just with water. It tastes just as good. I do just tend to enjoy adding it to a smoothie with fruit and veg just so I can tick off my five a day a little bit more efficiently. As you may have guessed, my Mark Zuckerberg-esque favorite outfit formula for work is a silky shirt and black trousers. Low maintenance, low effort, but I would say high reward in terms of looking more put together. This four month rotation is an oasis of predictability amongst chaos, if I'm being completely honest. It's the only rotation that I have where I'm nine to five Monday to Friday. And as much as I miss the random midweek days off that I had in my previous rotation, there is something that has been quite nice about having a routine. Cheers. Okay. Oh, look at the sun. POA for the day. Fridays we don't have a ward round, which means it's a good day to get a lot of stuff done. So this morning I'm having my supervised meeting. Doctors in the UK have a clinical supervisor and a educational supervisor. Your educational supervisor is the same for the whole year. And then your clinical supervisor is for that rotation that you're on. So your clinical supervisor, I guess, would be, I would say like the equivalent of maybe like a manager. They oversee like your clinical duties on more of like a day-to-day -day basis. And then your educational supervisor is supervising, I guess your overall education and development. Today is my meeting with my clinical supervisor. It is my start of rotation meeting, which is obviously a little bit late, but given strikes and everything, it, everything has just been so delayed. Oh, just like the traffic. But I see my clinical supervisor basically every day. So it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Normally at the beginning of every rotation, you set goals for the rotation. So areas of knowledge you want to develop, clinical skills that you want to develop, and then lay out like action points of how you're gonna develop them. And then what do you do with the weekend, baby? See you at, fingers crossed, 5 p.m. God, it's nice coming home and it not being completely dark. And that is it, another week in psychiatry done. As well as having my AG1 in the morning, when I get home from work, I try and have one teaspoon of collagen in water and have it by my desk. Dylan is kindly making dinner because I'm trying to edit a vlog to go up this weekend, as in this vlog, <laughs> this vlog right now. I'm trying to edit it so that you can go up on Sunday. Can you turn your music down just on so you can speak into the camera, otherwise I'm gonna get copyrighted. I reckon this is going to be a horrible angle. Oh, do. Beautiful. Beautiful. Guys, this is how I know that I'm an adult, is that my mum and dad asked me what I wanted for Christmas this year from old Santa Claus, and my answer was a set of knives, because since I moved into this flat in July, I have had a single knife, one knife, that I have used for everything, and would you say it was a good knife, Dylan? Um, no. No, no. I think it's the same knife that I bought in Ikea the August before I moved to medical school. 
So not only did I ask my mum and dad for a set of knives for Christmas, I think they may be one of the best Christmas presents I have ever had when analysing the positive impact that it's had on my life after I have received the knives. So thank you mum and dad, I'm officially an adult. My life is boring and I'm okay with that. Dylan made a risotto for dinner, which we all know is very, very, very high effort for high rewards, but high effort. And personally, that is the last meal that I want to be making after a long day at work. So it was really nice to try and get some editing done with the smells of a brewing risotto in the background. I have no idea how I thought that I was going to get that video edited and up by Sunday. But I think where my roads are now is Monday to Friday, nine to five. My main time for editing is the weekends. And sometimes I forget that I also need to rest in the weekend and I can't just spend the whole weekend editing. Cool. Guys, I just remembered it's Friday. Oh, we have a little glass of wine. Oh, I feel like I'm done with work for the evening. Crashed them up. I'll just do a big day tomorrow. With our risotto in hand, you guessed it, we perched ourselves on the sofa. I promise I will break this habit when I have a little bit more energy. And it was a special occasion because it was actually the traitor's final. Oh, two seconds. So Dylan went to the shop a couple of hours ago and he asked me, did I want anything from the shop? And I said, Dylan, I said, well, it is the traitor's final. The traitor's final. I said I would love a traitor's themed dessert and Dylan said to me, he said, What? What's the traitor's themed dessert? What do you mean the traitor's themed dessert? And I said, Dylan, this is your opportunity to shine. You show me what traitor's dessert is. So I don't know what's coming. Dylan is preparing my traitor's dessert. I'm so excited. Five minutes behind, Dylan. I don't want to see it on social media before. Oh my God. Yeah. What is this? It's uh, sticky toffee pudding. Traitor's toffee pudding? Traitor's toffee pudding. Traitor's toffee pudding? Yeah. <gasps> sticky traitor pudding. Sticky traitor pudding? Hey, this yeah. is amazing. Spooky ice cream. <laughs> Pulled it out of the bag, didn't you, babe? Cheers. Pulled it out of the bag. Why are you laughing? <laughs> I just went and got what I wanted. <laughs> I thought you did it because it was a tea. Watch live. <gasps> oh my god, I'm so excited. I did film our live reaction to the ending of the Traitors final. However, I do not want to spoil it for anyone if they are yet to watch it or intend on watching it. So I'm going to add it at the end as a deleted scene. If you wanted to see our, our thoughts, feelings and emotions. So I do think that maybe consciously or subconsciously why I've probably gone off vlogging a little bit is that weekly vlogging definitely is because I find like the idea of doing Monday to Sunday sometimes like a little bit intimidating which I know sounds really 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 stupid like say you're pressing a red button and you're just hitting record and getting on with your day to day life like what, why is that intimidating but I definitely do tend to beat myself up if I say for like an evening I forget to film anything or like I go a day and I just feel like I didn't really film that much and then I think it's going to be a crappy vlog and then like yeah beat myself up about it. So I think going into this vlog because I've been putting off vlogging for like maybe maybe like two months. I said to myself on Monday when you start getting tired stop the vlog. It doesn't need to be Sunday, it doesn't need to be god even Wednesday like if you get tired just stop because there was a vlog that I did start filming before that that I did just stop after less than a day because I just got way too tired but I am really happy that I made it to Friday and I don't feel tired I still feel like I still feel excited to carry on filming the vlog however I feel like it's always better to leave wanting more so with that being said I am gonna end the vlog yeah, I feel like I should stop saying love you lots and lots at the end of a vlog because I am a adult professional now, Faye, and I feel like that maybe isn't the most professional thing to say to people on the internet. But I can say I love this community lots and lots and lots and lots. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week and I will see you in the next video. <laughs>
tell me why I have believed all this time that I have believed the complete myth that you can train your hair to not get greasy. It's not true. It's not true. So like my, ha my hair is fine, lifeless. And like, I'm one of those people, I will wash my hair in the morning and it'll kind of be a little bit gross by the afternoon. I think just because my hair is so fine. So I've been trying to like stretch it out and stretch it out and stretch it out. And I've been doing this for like years now. And now it makes complete sense why it has never worked. So anyway, I found that out and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Like this is actually kind of great news. Like now I don't have to feel guilty about washing my hair every other day. But then actually washing your hair and drying your hair is actually quite time consuming. So I think I'm gonna stick to three days. First day, free shavaka do. Second day, mm, I think maybe like half up, half down, we can work with it. And then third day, the wax stick comes out. We go into the slick back bun moment, which is today. The Ooh. Point number two, and then I'm gonna leave you alone. We all know I'm a big fan of the slick back burn as my go-to low maintenance hairstyle, I guess. I've been using the Ego Argan Oil Gel for literally since third year of medical school. However, my best friend Sophie, she made me aware that using a wax is better on your hair. I need to fact check that one as well. But so this is with the wax stick rather than the gel. Oh. She's rubbed it out! 
This is a better end than last so. one. Because they definitely fancy each other. <laughs> oh my god. I'm gonna change it. Ah! Oh, your boat's locked in. And finally, one. Jazz has been so intelligent the whole way through. It's not that I wanted to make at all. Um, to be honest, I didn't think you for a few more But I've trusted Harry for a while. And Unfortunately, I've had suspicions in the past about you, Jazz. Are you doing Fair play, Jazz, Harry. you have received the most votes. Please now reveal, are you a traitor or are you a faithful? I am a faithful. 94% of the votes are for Harry. Oh, Harry. Oh, Harry. However, if one of you is a traitor... She's going to be heartbroken. You take it all. Molly, please reveal, are you a faithful... Oh, my fucking god. Oh, fair play, Harry. Oh, my god. Fuck. I wrote Harry's name down first and looked at him. And I just couldn't do it. I really trusted him, so... Yeah, I changed it. I'm the best traitor in the world! <laughs> I hope I didn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs>